Hello there. Today's tutorial is going to be about texture painting. Uh, the best reason for learning this is uh, to apply shading to a model. As you can see, this texture is from a human skin here, so you can see some shadow under the armpit, as well as the knees and other places that have some shading detail. What we're going to do is we're going to make this uh, avatar into like an anime type model by repainting the entire body um, to be anime. So the first step that I went ahead and did already was I split the outfit and the body into two different meshes. So I can disable the outfit whenever I want. Now this texture here currently is of human skin. So I'm going to actually open that in my Photoshop here. And as you see, there's the shading uh, of the arms, the belly button, etc. So one quick thing you could do is you can actually just find the skin color you want. Uh, this model in particular is going to be for a black whole chan model so she needs to have like a darker tan skin so i'm gonna i'm gonna find that skin color here i might have to mess with it some let's see but uh the next step after i find that color will be i'm gonna actually duplicate that layer and just heavily blur using gaussian blur that way i can still keep the shading but remove a lot of the skin uh details here and then after that, I'm going to go and grab a photo of the um, art that this is going to be referenced off of to grab a skin color. I've now went ahead and grabbed a bit of fan art that was referenced in the commission, and this would be the skin tone that the avatar is going to have. So I'm going to eye drop that skin color here, and I'm going to hide that model for now, and I'm going to create a new empty layer and paste in that color using the paint bucket. Now, of course, all that shadow from below is no longer there. So what I'm actually going to do is while selecting that layer, I'm just going to completely desaturate it. Uh, first, I'll set the skin layer to multiply. Uh, I believe it will work for now. And that will actually uh, go through. Now, however, because the skin underneath also has skin color, it's kind of merging the skin colors and becoming much darker than I want. So I'm actually going to go to black and white and make the skin underneath um, much whiter and black and white so when it applies the color of the skin to the shadows I can actually get a lot of the shading already done for me all right so I'm gonna go with this and I'm gonna hit apply as you can see underneath it was uh, turned to white and now it's this and I'm going to save this out as a JPEG or a PNG in this case, if you need transparency. So I'm going to call this, uh, I'm just going to add the word tan for now and paste that in there. Now I'm going to move back to Blender. I'm going to click on the checkered button here and click on the little folder so I can select that new body texture here. Let's find it. It might not have completely saved yet. There we go. All right, so, so far, the skin color is correct, and some of the shading in the more difficult spots, such as the uh, fingers, are still there. However, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you how to texture paint now so we can add some much more detailed shading. So you're going to want to make sure you select the body mesh that has that material, and you're also going to want to make sure that that material is highlighted when you're on that. Um, I'm actually going to keep the clothing showing for now so we can even paint shadows where the um, outfit would be. So you're going to go to tools and you're also going to go down to object mode and switch that to texture paint. Now you can use a drawing tablet. I do not have mine plugged in as I tend to actually prefer using my mouse for most of these, but you can do very extreme detail painting using a drawing tablet. It even has pressure sensitivity, which you can see here on the edge of the strength as well as the radius. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the default, which is uh, text draw, and I'm going to eye drop the color. So if you click on the white here and you go to the eyedropper and you click on that, I can eye drop this color here to get a, a darker tone. And then I'm going to make that a little bit darker and drag the color down just to get the color of what the shadow is going to be. 
Now, as of right now, this is set the strength of seven or uh, zero point seven. I'm just going to make that a hundred. And if you turn on GLSR, you can actually sh see the shadows a lot better. Um, but I'm going to go back to shadeless for now. So the first area is I'm going to paint underneath the necklace because there's going to be a shadow under there. So if you just click and drag, it's drawing that solid color that we eye dropped earlier right onto the model. Now, of course, it, it doesn't bleed through the model, so you'll you will have to rotate as you work. And the reason I did 100 strength is because we're going to be blurring this anyway. And you don't want to get random spots where it's darker than others because you accidentally overlapped. Uh, so now that I've painted under that necklace here, I'm going to switch to the smear tool. And to do uh, the reason for that is so I can give it a smooth gradient and clean this up some. Uh, the more you zoom out, uh, it might help create a, a drag here. So for example, you see how I'm dragging down like that? I drag the shadow and the shading down some. Uh, because uh, this is where the collarbone would be as well. So you can actually drag that color you painted earlier out and get a lot more detail over time. But I'm going to specifically focus on the necklace right now. So I'm going to dra um, drag that shadow in more because I did make it a little too thick. All right. And if you grab, basically, wherever you click with the smear tool and you drag towards it, it'll gr drag that color in. Um, that's why you wanted to split the, split the meshes, because if you had them merged, it would be dragging the white from the pearls into the skin texture. So I'm just going to go through here and drag that shadow around a bit more. Because even though um, VRChat and Unity do have shaders that can receive shadows and light, um, there is only so much detail that it will work with. Plus, if you want a uh, higher performance, you might not want uh, all your avatars to be able to have shadows casted on them in the first place. So drawing it right into the texture is the best idea. So I'm going to remove some of this. All right. So next I'm going to do some shading uh, for the chest. All right, so I'm going to go back to the text draw, and I'm going to think, uh, draw straight down. Now, this model, thankfully, because of the way the texture was before, as you see here, um, the, there's already a bit of a shadow for the chest here, and it's mirrored, meaning whatever I do on the one side will be reflected on the other, so you don't have to worry too much about symmetry in some of these models. Now, I'm going to actually disable the clothing so I can get a much better uh, picture here, and I'm just going to paint around kind of using the previous shadow as a guide. But uh, do not forget that um, breasts are uh, usually like teardrop shape, unless they're unnatural. So you kind of also want your shading to be reproducing that. Um, in fact, cosplayers, if you do look at a lot of the most recent photos, you'll notice that they even do a lot of breast contouring now. So this method that you're using to paint your avatar is actually even used in real photography. So you're kind of like duplicating that onto your model. All right, so now I'm going to turn the clothing back on so I can have that as a guide. And I'm going to start kind of dragging the colors into the cleavage here. And you just want to go through and keep using that smooth tool, such uh, from before. Now, after I get the shading where I want it, I'm actually going to go ahead and do a second pass where I'll use an even darker shade, and I'll go in and darken the shadows in the more... Uh, deeper crevices even more because as of right now this is this is good it's better than before but we can get more detail and this is was hidden by the necklace so i might as well repair that too even though it's not seen so yeah you basically just want to keep messing with the smearing until you get the shading how you'd like it. Um, I'm going to skip ahead until I'm done with this and I'll show you 
Um, I'll also do the um, butt area as well. And then I'll show you how to increase the darkness more and for the more deeper crevices. So I've went ahead and I finished uh, the shading on the chest for now. Um, I believe I'm happy with it as of right now. So next and but not least is the butt as well as we're going to we do, do the back of the knees and stuff as well. In fact, I'll do that right now. So let me hide our out, outfit again. You can turn on GSLR. It might help you find um, the back of the knee a little bit. So I'm going to do that. You can use soften as well to blur things however it takes a lot of cpu to do that and it, it's very laggy from what i've noticed so i tend to enjoy just smearing back and forth and it's uh, kind of gets the same effect i want um so i tend to not use smooth much and if you zoom out more it'll smear more just because it's covering more area um all right so we got the back of the knees all right that makes sense all right now the front, you can kind of make out. So I'm actually going to lower the string and just kind of do this. Because the knees, I, I, I don't want the shading to be as dark. So I'm going to do that. So a lot of this is going to be trial and error. I would suggest looking at a lot of um, animated art. And, uh, and check the shading in there. Um, DeviantArt's a great place for that. You can find some really high quality professional um, anime art to base your shadows off of. You can also look at a lot of um, mobile animated games um, to get an idea of what you want as well. Uh, but I'm gonna go through here And pretty much get the shadows for everything I want. That's where her painting line would be. I'm going to go back to using the darkest color there. I'm just going to keep dragging this out. So I'm going to skip ahead, but you can see that I basically am just going to keep within the... Uh, the way I'm shading, I'm, I'm going to pull out from the round source and kind of give it that round look. Because uh, if you if you don't have shadows on, as of right now, this is shadeless, but it's clearly looking like shadows are being cast. If I turn on GSLR, it's kind of adding a light source. So you can kind of see where the shadows would be lying. So uh, that's basically the point of the texture shading that I'm using right now. Now, if you really wanted to, you can even do this on clothing or anything. And you can sit there and draw... Um, whatever you wanted, you can draw the pa uh, the pattern of a sweater uh, over top of maybe a texture of uh, some cloth, and you can um, you that's pretty much how a lot of textures are made. Um, you'll want to you can pl apply the texture to the model, and then you hit spacebar, and you can type unwrap, and unwrap it, and do UV mapping. Um, when you go to the UV mapper, you it would place the vertices over top of wherever you wanted. This came with it, so I can't really, um, here, if I show you, if I do, turn on repeat here and zoom in, you can, you'll can you see that it already came mapped into the areas, but you might have to do that yourself by going to unwrap or smart projection, which you can get to by hitting spacebar and typing in smart UV projection. Um, but I'm going to continue to do this, and I'm going to skip ahead to show you how to do the more darker areas, and then I'll finish up. All right, so I went ahead and finished up by shading the shoulder blades as well as the feet and a couple other places like the spine. Now what I'm going to finish this off with is I'm going to make the shading a bit darker in a few spots. Uh, so I'm just going to go in and uh, make the color a bit darker for the shadows. And zoom in here. And then smear that out. But also drag inward because I want it to be a smooth gradient. And 
And be sure to keep saving during this process because if you undo or mess up, you will lose all this progress unless you save out the UV map as you work. You can actually save that out separately. So I will show you how to do that here once I'm done with this shading. And you can op always open this texture in Photoshop afterwards and smooth out areas that are harder to get to. Uh, another way would be I can cut the model in half or ma mask areas to really get into the nooks and crannies, but sometimes I find it's easier to just load up Photoshop and correct those little areas. All right, so I've made that shading a lot darker. I'm going to do the same back here. I'm just going to keep doing that until I get it to be as dark as I want here. I might have to turn on the clothing here to get make sure I get the shading right, but let's do that. All right. All right, so now I'm going to show you how to save out this UV map here. So this is the final step really. So you go to this drop down up here beside the help and go to UV editing. And when this is open, you can actually just go down the image and you'll see a little asterisk. That means that the texture paint that you've added needs to be saved out. So I'm going to click that and I can either save over the top of the texture that's applied or save it out as a new image. So I'm going to save it out as a new one and name it tan two. And now in my folder, I'm going to have a new texture called tan two and I can bring that into Photoshop and edit it separately and bring it back in. Um, but that about covers that. Um, as I said, you can just sit there and you can just shade until your heart's content. The more, the better. Um, definitely review some uh, models um, that you, or not models, but you can review art out there and you can really see the shading. Because if I look at the example here, you can see that they sh shade it and that's what adds a lot of that detail. And you're basically doing the same thing on the texture. Uh, but uh, as always, thanks for watching. If you guys uh, have any more questions, uh, feel free to join my Twitch channel and ask me when you see me working, or you can post in the comments below. Uh, there, I also have a Patreon where I post models uh, that I make weekly, and as well as avatar votes, and you can download those and upload those uh, to your own account. But as always, thanks for watching. Have a good day.